Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction from the seaside summer edition, vacation edition. Okay, since in the last episode we took a look to the new currently produced reel to reel machines, in this video, as you have seen from the title, we're gonna take a look to the currently made cassette decks. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, okay, I know, I know. These decks that I'm gonna list and that I'm gonna discuss are well known. Who is interested in cassettes already knows what I'm gonna talk about. In any case, again, as you know, it's useful, I think, to just go through these, signal their presence, and at the end, I wanna give, in contrast with the other video, this time I do wanna give my impression, my evaluation, even though I do not have these decks. In this case, uh, thanks also to the reviews that have been done by other people, other YouTubers on the web, it is clear what you're supposed to do to enjoy cassettes. But I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video. Okay, let's start. The first group of decks comes from a well-renowned hi-fi brand, which is still present today. Who am I talking about? TIAC, absolutely. Great hi-fi, especially in the past, but still ongoing. And they have two decks, actually. One, the AD850, which also has a CD and goes around $400, but also a dedicated double, dual well, double cassette deck which is the W1200. Better. Definitely better than the other one. This one instead goes a little higher, around $500. It depends. Let's take a look. Here we are on the webpage of TIAC. And our first model is the AD850. We also have a compact disc. We're not going to go through the features, you guys, of all these decks. It does not make any sense. I just want to briefly take a look at the tape aspects, the tape characteristics, okay? The cassette compartment. The rest is not relevant, at least not in this video. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the specs. And already here we start to see that unfortunately the specs aren't that good. The Wow and Flutter is 0 0.2125 the uh, frequency response is 50 to 12,000. Not that good, not that good. Uh, fortunately, it does play Chrome and record Chrome in this case. So already from here, we do not have a great impression, but this is a combo. Let's take a look to the better one, the top, the top of the line, the W1200, which TIAC, as you can see, is quite proud of. Okay, let's take a look to the specs again, which are pretty similar. Again, 025 to, to, for the wow and flutter. The frequency response, not very good, not excellent. 30 to 15 kilohertz. We do have the capability of uh, record and playing and recording on Chrome. I know it can only also play metal tapes. Uh, there's an excellent review of uh, this and other other decks done by uh, Westlife so I don't have to go in details I can tell you that the uh, the measurements he did did reveal a better wow and flutter actually 0 0.01 I think which was pretty good also the frequency response was a little better than this nothing special obviously nothing special and we're missing Dolby there there are other solutions uh, as we, as you can see here, there's a, there is a, their own noise reduction system since Dolby is not available, and that's more or less what is happening for TIAC. Okay, let's proceed now to the second group, strictly connected, actually. From whom? Tascam. And what is Tascam? Tascam is the professional division of TIAC. In fact, we have the 
CDA580, which is actually very similar, if not practically identical to the AD850. Plus there's also, again, a dual well, dual cassette type of deck, the 202 Mark 7, which more or less is probably the most recent produced, currently produced, but also the most recent available. And again, in this case, it's very similar to the W1200. I mean, it's the same company. They're just changing a few little things. But the price is a little higher in both cases. The, the Tascam models do have a, a price tag slightly higher. For example, the 202 is 600 against the 500 of the W1200. Let's take a look. Here we are on the Tascam website and our first model is the CDA580. And as you can see, yes, it is identical to the AD850. That is why it is practically the same company. Uh, there are a few differences between this and also the above uh, version, the above model. The 202, which is Mark 7, which is practically almost the same as the TACW1200. Um, there are a, there are a few features, uh, like for example the possibility to mount it on a rack, this type of double play mode of the two wells contemporary, and the same at the same time, a, a few little things. But in the end, the the specs for the tape are the same. As I said before, um, Westlife underlined that the specs are a little better than what is declared, but in any case, not that special again type 1 type 2 30 to 15 kilohertz nothing special signal to noise ratio not that good wow and flutter not not that good as uh, although this is the declared one in that video we uh, clearly saw a much better wow and flutter actually nevertheless the specs are a little depressing plus it's practically the same machine okay for our third position we have a model made by Toshiba, the Oryx TYAK1, which goes around $300. This was specifically made for the Japanese market, actually, but I've seen it around on eBay and also on a few online stores. So if you're interested, take a look, but I doubt you're gonna be. Let's take a look. Taking a look very brief at the Oryx by Toshiba, there is a full video by Tecmon which goes in great detail and he clearly underlines the very bad quality, unfortunately, of this deck. This is probably the worst of all the decks I'm presenting in this video. Uh, there aren't that many clearly available specs, unfortunately, but trust me guys, uh, unfortunately there is a very, very sad <laughs> situation here. Let's pass on. Okay, for our last position, and you will see why we're already done on this short list, we have the Marantz, the PMV 300 CP. And this is quite cheap. Uh, you would expect a higher price tag actually for, for Marantz, which is still a well-renowned hi-fi company. Absolutely, not as in the past, but absolutely renowned and affirmed. Uh, what is the price tag? Only 160 and you can find it for cheaper even. So quite good. The only problem, as we will see, is that this isn't a Marantz project. Let's take a look. Here is the PMD 300 CP. Decently look deck, looking deck. It's a double well, as we have seen. Here below we can find the specs. Again, very very bad i'm sorry to say 58 db wow and flutter 0.2 total harmonic distortion pretty high uh, the frequency response is down here you can't even play the metal tapes uh, you can only uh, do the chrome and normal which is which is decent actually the specs are very similar to the tiac because i think the transport may be very similar in any case, disappointing, disappointing. What is even more disappointing is that this is not a Marantz deck 
actually. It's a rebrand because there are dozens of these decks with their own brand, like this pile. Hmm, seen similar. Yup, because it is. It's the same deck. But not also, not only pile, also ion. The same exact deck. But also rank force. There it is. Even cheaper. You guys, uh, and it goes on and on. So unfortunately, I would highly suggest to stay away from these decks. The best of all, if you really want to go with a new deck, is probably this one. The TAC W1200. Okay guys, I tried to keep this kind of compressed. It's useless to go too much in depth. Uh, there are other videos, as I said, go and take a look at them if you're interested. Nonetheless, I do want to state nice and clear that if you're interested in cassettes, maybe it's better to start from a boombox, something more simple. If you really don't know what you're doing or you just want to get that little taste of analog, I think it's better to get a Sony, a Pioneer boombox. Forget these decks. I mean, the TAC is decent, is pretty good, but the specs in the end aren't. I mean, just take a look, for example, at the, the specs of a, one, uh, of a deck I recently reviewed on my channel, the Technics RSB100. As you can see, the wow and flutter, the frequency response, uh, it's exceptional, exceptional, as well also as the dynamic range, the signal to noise ratio. I mean, the decks made mainly in the 80s are unbeatable. And you don't have to go to Nakamichi Dragon, the, the Revox top of the line, or the, the, the Sony's, the Pioneers, or anything else, no problem. Even a normal standard quality cassette deck is gonna be fabulous, fantastic, stellar compared to this stuff that we just seen, just seen, okay guys? So if you are interested, just surf for the, on, the, on eBay, on places like that, Hi-Fi Shark will list um, a lot of places where you can buy fully refurbished decks, okay guys? Always refurbished decks, serviced, recapped if, if possible, where they changed all the capacitors. It's just better, uh, together with the belts and everything. I mean, and also a calibration and uh, the measurements that everything is going properly. The wall flutter, the speed, the, the azimuth of the head. I mean, it is all mechanical. And if you get something that has just been there for 40 years, it's not gonna sound that good. Instead, if you try to invest that little extra amount of money with, for a refurbished model, this is very important, guys. You're gonna have top-notch quality. Or just get a used one, normal used one, even if, if you're brave, even something broken if you want, and then send it to a lab and they'll do an excellent work for not too much. Labs are not that expensive. A fully refurbished uh, service will go around 70 to $150. Even more, depends from the pieces, obviously, but usually it's not that expensive against the common knowledge. So, the common idea, actually. So. Try to do this and you will see that you will really enjoy cassettes if you start recording even more. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember that music was born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.